Hey there, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. So MediaTek has announced a new mainstream processor, not a flagship processor, a mainstream processor called the Dimensity 8300. And of course, it is the successor to the Dimensity 8200. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, let's dive in and look at the new MediaTek Dimensity 8300, 8300. So at a glance, what have we got? We've got four Cortex-A715 cores. One of them is clocked at 3.35 gigahertz. The other three are clocked at three gigahertz. And then we have four Cortex-A510 processors. So really this is a kind of a one plus three plus four setup, even though the first four are actually the same architecture, so there's no Cortex X core in here. There's no Cortex X2, X3, or X4. But this is a Cortex A715 clocked at a higher clock rate. And then we have four megabytes of system cache along with four megabytes of L3 cache. Now, coupled with that CPU, you've got an ARM Mali G615 MC6 GPU. We must, of course, forget APUs for the uh, neural network stuff. The new APU, the 780, which uses the same kind of architecture as is in the flagship Dimensity uh, processors. It is capable of doing generative AI and it's got one performance core and one efficiency core. And the whole thing is built on a four nanometer process from TSMC. It's the second generation of four nanometer process. Other things worth mentioning are they've upgraded the RAM. This is now LPDDR5X, which has a top throughput of 8,533 megabits per second. There's also now UFS 4.0. And of course, on the connectivity front, you've got 5G, Wi-Fi 6E with 2x2, two two, and then Bluetooth 5.4. So let's just do a comparison between the previous generation. So we've got an upgrade from the Cortex-A78 to the Cortex-A71. One five using that same idea of one plus three plus four, this time clocked at 3.35 gigahertz. So not only the improvement in the microarchitecture from going from the A78 to the A715, you've also got a higher uh, clock speed. Uh, and then again, the upgrade in the GPU, this is now the G615, the next generation after the G610. Much better NPU because now we've got generative AI built into this because of course that's what you need. And that's bringing this generative AI also here to the mainstream. And then the upgrade from LPDDR5 to LPDDR5X. Also very important though, that upgrade from UFS 3.1 to UFS 4.0. In terms of the connectivity, little upgrades across the board, for example, Bluetooth 5.4 compared to Bluetooth 5.3. So what does this mean? Well, you're looking at a 20% higher peak CPU performance and 30% less power than the Dimensity 8200. We're now on ARM V9, so they've jumped over the Cortex-A710 straight to the Cortex-A715, so it's two generations of uh, microarchitecture improvement, and now we're in ARM V9 territory. Nice to see that here in the mainstream. 60% better GPU performance, 55% less power. So better CPU, better GPU, and then of course there are some other features here. As I mentioned, there's some gaming features. There's the uh, APU, which can handle up to a 10 billion parameter large language model, up to 3.3 times better performance compared to Dimensity 8200. Uh, no actual numbers on number of tokens per second or things like that yet. Well, I'm sure we'll get those in the future once devices are out. And as I said, it's got UFS 4.0 and this has got multi-circular Q, MCQ, which allows each CPU core to handle data transfer simultaneously to boost performance on multi-core systems. So uh, not only the upgrade to UFS 4.0, but also the support for MCQ. Now, what does that mean compared to the main competition? Well, that would be the Snapdragon 7 G3, which was actually recently also just announced. And so we're both on the same CPU core type, the Cortex-A715, however, much higher clock speed on the Dimensity 8300, 3.35 gigahertz compared to 2.63, and even on the main performance cores there, three gigahertz compared to 2.4 gigahertz. Um, GPU, you've got the ARM Mali G615 compared to the Adreno. As I've said in many other videos, they don't give us any idea about the Adreno, what, what it is, how many shader cores there are, anything like that. We just called the Adreno GPU. And then for the APU, the NPU, we've got the uh, APU 780 compared to the Hexagon NPU. Again, the differences aren't really laid out in terms of overall performance, 
This one's got LPDR5X, as I've already mentioned. This one's got UFS 4.0, as I've already mentioned. So both of those better than what you get in the Snapdragon 7 Gen 3. Uh, and I think when looking at this, you get slightly better Wi-Fi because you get two times two plus two times two on the Snapdragon, on the Qualcomm, but it's still uh, Bluetooth 5.3, Bluetooth 1. Not that actually make any difference to anybody in the real world, but here we go, we're looking at the specs, so those are interesting to look at. When the Dimensity 8300 will be used in 5G devices launching in a global market before the end of this year. And since we're already in uh, November as I'm making this video, that's only literally a few weeks ago. And here's the summary of the overall chip. As I said, octa-core design, no X cores, but the good generations, ARM v9 generations of the Cortex A715 and the A510, the G615 for the GPU, upgrading the memory, upgrading the storage, second generation 4 nanometer from TSMC. Then, of course, you've got the latest uh, NPU for doing all of the uh, generative AI stuff, stable uh, fusion, and so on. Uh, there's some camera improvements over here listed and some display uh, improvements there. So, overall, looks like a strong mainstream processor. Okay, so there you go. I'd love to hear what you think about all of this in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like this kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to this channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.